Let's look at the Samsung. Look at the Samsung fucker. Everyone, just look at the Samsung fucker. All right. Concentrate on the Samsung. Right, follow the Samsung. Follow the Samsung fucker. All right. Follow it with your eyes. Follow it with your eyes. Back and forth. Repeat after me. I will not be a vagina face pussy. I will not be a vagina face pussy. Even though you are what you eat, eating pussy does not make you a pussy. I will not be a vagina face loser. Repeat after me. I will not be a vagina face loser. <sighs> Timmy Tam, I'm not going to knock you out. Are you fucking kidding me? Tiffany's doing all this bullshit, isn't she? Okay. I can't believe... And you say I'm autistic. I had to I had to explain this shit to you guys. Okay. So if someone says, Hey, I wanna knock you out, you wanna know what you're supposed to say? Don't break your fist. Go I won't sweat you. Go ahead. Knock me out. You're gonna break your fist. I'll tell you something else. If you <laughs> If you want to fuck with someone, go ahead and let them hit you. And when they go to punch you, like lean into it, like headbutt it, headbutt their fist with your head. Because like if you headbutt like, if you like hit get like the hard part of your head, on like the the especially if they're not used to punching things, you can like break their knuckle. Uh yeah. Uh, okay, so keep forgetting. You all didn't get kicked out of high school and get to hang out with a bunch of world champion boxers and kickboxers when you were uh, 16 years old. I did. Okay, so. When I had my tryouts for Olympia Boxing when I was 16, about to turn 17 years old, because I was getting kicked out of high school, I'd already been, oh, uh, dude, I was, I was, getting kicked out of the school they send you to when you get kicked out of school. Uh, and uh, I had to go talk to Coach Jones. This motherfucker had some kind of an IZOD shirt on, like basketball shorts, his socks pulled up to like his fucking knees, like it's the fucking 60s or 70s. And these like white tennis shoes that looked brown as shit because they were old and, and and dirty. And he was telling me about his new TV he had just got. I was like, "Hey, I'm here for the boxing tryout. Have you seen this TV? It's a 50 inch TV." Blah blah blah. Just let him talk about TV. <laughs> the and then he asked me for money <laughs> before anything else. Hey, can, can I pay for the pleasure of getting my ass kicked? <laughs> no, I just I don't just want to get my ass kicked. I want to get my ass kicked professionally. <laughs> So I gave him a thousand. I gave him a thousand dollars. He told me that would be a good down payment. He had individual price plans for a, a, everybody. He basically just made you keep paying until he thought you paid enough based on how much effort you were putting in. I ended up only paying twelve hundred. I saw someone pay thirty six hundred. I saw him kick someone out and tell them to go shit 12 times a day and eat one time a day. And if they don't do that, it's not even show up. That motherfucker. So anyways, so he already had my money, right? Like, and this big old sign says no refunds. 
and I didn't want to go to jail because <laughs> I had to like make this work or I was going to go to jail. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. And then uh, we're talking about like why I want to fight and my probation officer like wrote some letter about me that he's like oh you're th you're him. First he's like why do you want to fight? And I'm like uh, you know I've always you know I used to wrestle and blah blah blah. Oh, you're one of those. Okay, what grade are you in? Uh, I, I was supposed to be a junior in high school, but I just got kicked out of high school, and I skipped a whole bunch of grades, so I got thrown out of senior year. But I'm supposed to be a junior, and all this other. Uh, I was supposed to be a sophomore, actually. And then he was like, "Oh, you're him," and I was like, "Fuck!" And then he like pulled out some like letter pamphlet. He had some like envelope with a letter in it. That was typed about me. I was like, God damn it. And, and then he goes, Oh, so you're a tough guy. And I was like, Not really. And he goes, You call me a liar? Because, like, no matter what you do, you're going to be. The, 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 the trick is, no matter what you do, it's going to be wrong. You have to just let him talk. Uh, and, and then he says, have you ever been punched in the face? <laughs> like, shove his finger, like, right into my face. It was a big old gold chain with these, like, boxing gloves on it. The only shit he had that, like, looked nice was boxing. Everything else was, like, falling apart. He's like, have you ever been punched in the face? And I was like, yeah, a lot of times. And like, he didn't know, like, I could kind of tell that he hadn't heard that one before. So he was like, have you ever been punched in the face? And I was like, yeah, I've been punched in the face. I get punched in the face a lot of times where I think I'm here. And he was like... Have you ever been punched in the face by someone who drank 10 months just to punch you in the face? And he like, kind of like looked at himself like, that was a good one. I'm going to remember that one. And I said, no. But I brought you that $1,000 so we could set that up. And he put that money right in his pocket and said I like you you're gonna do good here and then he told me to jump rope and hit the bags and he left he just fucking left <laughs> he jump rope and hit the bags and he left and like three hours later he's like oh shit you're still here <laughs> go home That was like the best day of my life. Seriously, I could just hit the bags all day long. No one was telling me what to do. No one was giving me some bullshit. All I had to do was beat the shit out of those bags. And anyone who was dumb enough to get in between me and punching things got punched. <sighs> Someone had, back when cell cell phones were starting to be new back then, there was some video of me punching an ATM. I just needed something to punch. Anyways, if someone says I might punch you in the face for whatever reason. You're supposed to say, don't break your fist. You don't cry. You don't think about things. You don't group DM everyone. Is he serious? Is he serious? No, you dumb motherfucker. You're a pussy. You're trying to get your balls to drop.
I don't know. Like, you see, believe it or not, I used to, I used to never shut the fuck up. People used to tell me I need to quiet down more. Just like my dad and my grandpa, they were like, silence, stoic, all that bullshit, right? I was like, no, you guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet people. I'm gonna introduce myself to everyone. Do all the shots you should take, miss. Blah blah blah. Right, all that bullshit. Why did I bring that up? Short-term memory loss. And something about boxing and getting punched in the face. There's something about like, it was something and it was going to be, I, I ended up doing a lot of boxing and getting punched in the face and decided not to run my mouth anymore. That's pretty much what it's going to be. I mean, if, if you, like, know you're going to do something, that's because then that's not running your mouth. That's, like, straight up telling someone. Like, I'm... <sighs> I'm going to make sure everything's running smooth. I'm going to be in New York tomorrow in the morning. I'm leaving at night. Because I have work on Monday. And I'm going to bring my work phone with me. So that way if anything happens that's an emergency. I can just turn around and go home. Uh, thanks for making me priority seating. Something tells me Tiffany did that. You all just need to toughen up. I refuse to believe that the way a bunch of world-class boxers from the 70s, 80s, and 90s that I had trained with in 2000 and 2001 had it wrong and all you dumb motherfuckers had it right. I refuse to believe that. Even the ones that didn't become world champions and all that bullshit they still became like vice presidents. They became like business owners. They just like they did something. They didn't just fucking watch content and all that bullshit. It's coach used to talk about boxing lets you assert your emotions, gives you the confidence to be like, no, I want that. Like that's mine. Like, when you, when you, like, bite your tongue, oh, sh I remember now, oh, my God, I remember now, oh, my God. I don't, I, he never let me see what was in that letter. Whatever the fuck my probation officer told me, told Coach Jones about me, I will never know. He literally took that with him to the grave. Oh, I just remember. He kept calling me hot shot. For like the first month that I was there, he kept calling me hot shot. Hey, hot shot, come over here. Oh, fuck. He's going to put me in the ring again. And then, um, hey, hot shot, come over here. I'm going to talk to you. Oh, fuck. And then, uh, I was like, oh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, but I'm a minor and I didn't bring my mouthpiece. And I shit you not, he just punched me in the liver. He just Punched, not hard, but like, like, shocked me. And he said, wait right here. And he went into his office and he came back out with like, the packs of like the Wrigley gum, the, the blue pack, the yellow pack, the red pack. Yeah, just like just a handful of these gums. And he says, start chewing. And I had to chew 
my own mouthpiece. It it worked pretty fucking good. I got hit a few times, and I thought I was going to lose some teeth, but I didn't. I cannot believe that shit. He, and then, like, after I got my ass beat, who was it? Some dude named Diego or Diego, some F- Filipino motherfucker beat the shit out of me. And I thought I was going to get, like, encouragement, like, good job, you know, like, you move your head more. No, he's like, bring your mouthpiece next time. It wasn't until I overheard him telling other boxers advice, and then I started doing that, and he was like, oh, so you are listening. Here, let me let, let me show you something. <sighs> Builds character. Look, I'm coming tomorrow because Tiffany. Whatever makes Tiffany happy, all right? Thank you, dear, for making me priority seating. I'm literally just going to smoke and chill, and if someone wants to invite me to dinner, that's why I gave it an extra three hours before my train leaves, but I really don't give a shit. That could just be an extra nap I take. What do you guys do all day? What do you do all day? What the fuck is it that you do all day when someone makes a joke about knocking you out and you get into a group DM with a bunch of people and decide to give them priority seating instead of just saying, don't break your fist? Because you don't understand, like, you're... If you say, don't break your fist, you're making a joke out of it, but also standing your ground and letting people know that you will throw down. And nine times out of ten, that's enough to make someone, not not for me, I'll, that'll just piss me off. Like, if I really wanted to hit you, I would just, and you said that shit to me, I would be like, let's find out! But, like, I'm not, I was just, oh, I honestly... I didn't even give a shit. I didn't think twice about it. I just say that to everyone. It's just something that we used to do back in the boxing gym. I don't think any of you understand a concept as simple as roughhousing anymore. I was just... You want to be honest? I was trying to make a friend. I was like, hey, if I knock you out, what are you going to do? Are you going to fight back? No, you're going to just cry about it and give me priority seating. Thanks. Thank you very much. I am going to make sure all the apps are running correctly. Take a massive shit, get a workout in, shower up, and get ready to go to New York. And I'm happy about it. I will see everyone tomorrow. Let your balls drop, everybody. Stop being pussies.